Work to do then. Collection of the events that landed you in a cell? My mind is blank, save for the glint of a silver object, the toll of a bell, and a presence of some sort. A glint of silver and a tolling bell. I must say, you look very tired. Yes, I'm so very... Very tired. Now you're going to do a little job of work for me, aren't you? Now I'm going to do a little job of work for you. You've cost me a bit of money, mate. So I think it's only fair that you replenish my coffers with donations from the good people of London. You will steal money for me, won't you? Yes, I will steal money for you.
me, you dodger! Good. Very good. Now, we can't have criminals like you roaming the streets. You will surrender to the police, won't you? Yes, I will surrender to the police. Oh, and when you do, you're going to do a silly little dance for them. I say, you gave me a terrible fright. Muttering about a man named Ezio. I was hypnotized by Enzio Capelli. Not a demon after all. Nor Italian for that matter. I suspected hypnotism from the very start. You must find the villain. to obey the bell. Once. I admit it. I'm not Italian. It was just for my act. Nobody wanted to see a British hypnotist. I don't care. I'll give you anything you want. I would like you to be quiet. Are you a contemporary of Dr. Elliotson? Never heard of the man. Mesmerism as a criminal enterprise was not a bright idea. 
How dare you? I'm a hypnotist! not work out an arrangement. You will make reparations for your crimes and liberate the innocence you've used.
Lithocarpus, Fagus sylvatica, Ulmus minor, Paxus baccata, um... Ah. What's it called again? Um, Salix alba. There it is. Iris versicolor, commonly known as Harlequin blue flag. I didn't know you had a twin sister, Mr. Fry. Evie Fry, sir. It's a pleasure. Usually I would reciprocate the sentiment, Miss Fry, but today I'm afraid nothing will bring me pleasure. What's troubling you, sir? I am used to people challenging my ideas. In fact, I live for it, the cut and thrust of spirited debate. Lately, however, attacks against my reputation have taken a darker turn. Threats of violence against my person and against my colleagues. I do not wish anyone to be hurt because of my research. You helped me with Staric Syrup. I am in your debt. We help each other, sir. My brother and I will make sure that you can continue your work in peace. What do you know of bones? Only a few of their names learned from books. Hmm. Perhaps it would be simpler if I just explained the situation. A few days ago, a German colleague, Dr. Schwartz, sent me a telegram. He informed me he was on his way to London. A few days ago, a German colleague, Dr. Schwartz, sent me a telegram. He informed me he was on his way to London to deliver a very important fossil, you see. In fact, he should arrive at Charing Cross any moment now. Would you ensure no harm comes to him? I'll ensure Dr. Schwartz's safety and make sure you get that fossil. Splendid. But please do be careful. Like finding. Wouldn't hurt to know what the Wouldn't hurt to know what the Wouldn't hurt to know what the Mr. Darwin has sent me to ensure you reach him safely, with your cargo intact. Just act naturally. Right. So, how is your father? By which I mean my dear brother Frank, with whom I grew up, of course. Oh, splendid! Wonderful to hear! I'll do my best not to call attention to how remiss he was in forgetting to warn me about the delicate situation which brings me here today.
Dr. Schwartz? Never got on the train. I should deliver this to Mr. Darwin. Last, my heart hasn't stopped pounding. You have it? Wonderful. But where is Dr. Schwartz? I'm afraid he was intercepted, sir, in Germany. However, I have recovered the fossil. Dear Lord, I should tell you, I was recently approached by men who sought to purchase all my research on the condition I work only for them. Obviously, I refused. Scientific knowledge cannot be bought. It belongs to everyone. Let these villains do their worst.
Ah, uh, my young friend. How good it is to see you. Fortunate, really. It would appear a highly toxic plant, which has the extraordinary effect of making people quite delirious, has been found in this very park. Yet, as far as modern science is aware, no such plant exists. I fear the good people of London might... I fear the good people of London might be in danger. Will you investigate? Not your average flower. Mr. Darwin was right about these plants. Oh, I don't feel well. That's one less to worry about. These footprints must belong to a rogue gardener. Mr. Darwin will want to inspect these flowers. But you, you don't seem quite like yourself, if I may say so. Hmm, it's just as I suspected. Those noxious fumes are not being released from the flowers, but from the pots. There must be something in there. An hallucinogenic concoction of some kind. Not unlike the soothing syrup, I should think. We must dispose of it, and quickly. I believe, my young friend, that I might know just the place. Who would want to poison the population of London? Who could devise such a nefarious plan? Obviously, it can't be Dr. Elliotson. So who can it be? An organization my brother and I have been fighting all our lives. I'm afraid, my young friend, that some of your enemies want their toxin returned to them. Might I suggest you position our carriage directly in front of theirs? I believe the fumes will impair their ability to drive. Well 
done. Well done indeed. Now we must hurry and destroy our cargo. We're almost there. My young friend, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I need to ask a favor of you. A delivery awaits me at the docks, a very rare orchid, all the way from the island of Madagascar. But there is a problem. One of my associates wants the flower for himself. He sent ruffians to collect it, if you can believe that. I need you to collect it for me first.
Ah, thank you, my young friend, thank you. This little orchid may seem inconsequential, but it holds secrets which could potentially change our very understanding of the world. It would have been a shame to lose it. Shame indeed. Thank you. My young friend, today's papers carry a rebuttal of Mr. Owen's slanderous and ignorant remarks about my work. However, I'm feeling quite like a fossil today. Would you be a dear and get me a copy of the newspaper?
saved my life. Correct. Now tell me, why have you attacked the newsboy? A man paid me and my mates to force newsboys to display this leaflet. Yeah, take the bloody thing and leave me alone. Mr. Darwin will want to hear about this. Thank goodness you're here. Impossible as it may sound, spring Jack has returned. We need to do something before the unthinkable happens. He did say that we'd not seen the last of the spring villain. There may be more to this than we originally thought. Ghost, a fiend, a terror in the night. 
am a ghost, a fiend, a terror in the night. Thanks to you, the Ghost Club's reputation has grown tremendously. We are a beacon of reason in a world beguiled by superstition. But I believe we have encountered one genuine spirit. Can you be certain? That's the question. One might surmise that the spirits that haunt us are simply our deepest fears, manifested as apparitions. Shame. I've always wanted to see a ghost or a goblin. I propose a toast to the Ghost Club and the virtuous twins that have aided it. Miss Evie and Mr. Jacob. Cheers. Cheers. are not apes. If the circumstances were not so grave, I'd compliment the artist on the wonderful caricature. 
They are fools if they believe they can stop progress by printing leaflets and killing newsboys. We must find out who is behind this propaganda before more innocents are harmed. I should very much like it if you could find and remove these awful things. Perhaps you can catch one of the bill posters red-handed.
You! What do you think you're doing? you up to this? Why are you spreading slander about Mr. Darwin's theories? Darwin refused to cooperate with us. We wanted to recruit him, but he rebuffed all our offers. We've tried to intimidate him, blackmail him, but he's a stubborn old git. I'm dismantling your propaganda press.
unspeakable has happened. A policeman arrested Mr. Darwin and carried him away as if he were nothing but a common criminal. That policeman... He is corrupt to the bones, I'm sure of it. Oh, I do so fear for Mr. Darwin's safety. Miss Nightingale, do you know where they might have gone? Uh, the policeman... He did mention a funeral. I believe I know where it is. Follow me. Poor Mr. Darwin has been through so much recently. Those people are trying to discredit a lifetime of work. It's disgraceful. And I fear Mr. Darwin is no longer the fit young man who once traveled the world. Here we are. The obsequies are taking place here. Go on. I will be waiting here. for such brutality no what do you want from me to I need you to be honest with a friend of mine of oh you're a brash one aren't you no desperate times call for desperate measures This is the culprit. I was just carrying out my orders. Arresting an old man and dragging him off to Lord knows where is fine work indeed for a policeman. Now, sir, tell us where you have taken Mr. Darwin. A man paid me to bring him to his secret base. How terrible. We will need transportation. He is very weak. We shouldn't move Mr. Darwin until I have seen to his wounds. They're here! Attack! Mr. Darwin's condition is stable. You may move him now.
Please look after him, Miss Nightingale. My brother and I will visit soon. Well, look who's here. We were very worried about you, sir. You're looking spry for a fossil, sir? A man's friends are the best measure of his worth. I'm proud to count you among mine. The dangers pass us no need to leave, sir. What Mr. Darwin needs now is rest. To that end, he's joining his family on the Isle of Wight. Rest, indeed. I shall start work on my next book. I must insist that you recuperate quietly, sir. The acquisition of knowledge is in itself sufficiently recuperative. Go, tell her. This is one fight I aim to avoid, sir. Thank you for everything, my friends. Ideas, like people, can only thrive when they are free. I'm coming over there, girl! My dear Darwin, do you think our young friend here, equipped with a multiplicity of talents, might be enough to ensure Mr. Hammond safe passage? I do not believe I've had the pleasure of meeting a Mr. Hammond. A mutual friend of ours. He arrives in London today. From South Africa, no less. Mr. Hammond is possessed of both tremendous wealth and charming innocence which makes him rather attractive prey for some of our great city's less savory inhabitants. 
We fear he'll need a more robust escort than two old men might provide. I'm actually rather busy. We have already told him to expect you. His train should have arrived ten minutes ago. Then I shan't keep him waiting. Splendid. Off you go. Mr. Hammond, I believe? That is correct. Evie Fry. Mr. Dickens sent me to meet you. Now, oh, good old Dickens. How very kind of him. Lead on, then. Right there, Miss. London. <laughs> Can't say I've missed the weather. to trade them for mine. dead and have thus shed my fortune. I shall meet Bella Wilton as a nobody. We shall see if she'll have me now. Come, we must dispose of my body. Find us a carriage to take us to the river. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Now let us go and meet my fiance. I can't wait to see her response. I feel quite liberated, as if a great weight has been lifted from my shoulders. After this, just to be sure, would you there take you me to my fiancé's house? I shall deliver the sad news there you go. myself. Don't you think that's a little risky? She has never set eyes on me. Besides, I need to ascertain whether I like her as well. And I want to see how she reacts to the news of my death. Come on, hurry up! It's taking far too long. Slow down. You're going the wrong way, I'm sure of it. Miss Wilson? Yes? My name is John Rokesmith. I'm afraid I have some terrible news for you. Oh? Your fiancé, John Hammond, was found dead in the River Thames this morning. Oh, how awful! Poor Mr. Hammond. I am at a loss at what to say to you, sir. You must forgive me. She is delightful. Why, I do believe I love her. I hope she's more intrigued than she is appalled. You remember that young lady I was engaged to marry before I feigned my death so that I could see what sort of woman she was? Well, I have good news. Faster! I'm now in love with her. I want to marry her after all. And I need you to help. There you go. I have a rather artful plan. You, playing the part of a ruffian, will kidnap her. Then you must bring her to where I am waiting. I shall leap from a shadowy corner and beat you to a pulp thereby saving her life and winning her heart. Have you thought this through? Now, put me down somewhere insalubrious and I shall ready an ambush for you. Somewhere in the Lambeth shall suffice. There you are. Easy now. This'll do. Looks rough enough. Off you go and nab her. She's at Waterloo Station, I believe. Oh, and make sure you play your part well. Let's 
Slow down. Gotta go. Coming with me. I don't want to hurt you. Stop. Walk. No. Never a quiet moment in London, I suppose. What's that then? That looks like trouble over there. Unhand me this instant. Barry, what's going on now? What's going on? driving imposing. Curious. I wonder what that's about. What is the meaning of this? Interesting. Oh, what are those brigands? 
Titans up to you. Yeah. I'll grab it too. This is terribly inappropriate. What the devil is going on? What's that? Looks exciting. Huh? We make for a peculiar pair. You'll be found out in no time. What's going on there? What's happening over there? Is there nothing I can say to make you release me? What in the blazes is that about? Something going on there? Should I be concerned with what's happening over there? Unhand her, ruffian! I shall save you, madam, for I am John Hammond, your fiancé. What? Like a... Olga! <laughs> Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! Clearly, I am your better. Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! <laughs> Clearly, I am your better! Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! <laughs> Clearly, I am your better! Take this, you rogue! Take your punishment! <laughs> Clearly, I am your better. What a happy coincidence that you were here to save me. Wasn't it? And if you will allow me, my dearest Bella, I shall forever be by your side to protect you from this day forth. Come, my dear, let us be gone from this terrible place, and I shall explain all. I'm certain Mr. Dickens and Mr. Darwin would like to know of their friend's good fortune. Thank you. 
Yes, that's And so all's well that ends well. Our young lovers are united at last and will soon marry. I too hope to meet a man who will fake his own death and arrange my abduction just to see if I can be trusted. And by the looks of you, they really hit it off. <laughs> I must say, it's all rather exciting. I do love these sorts of tales. It all feels strangely familiar. I wonder why. We should drink to John Hammond and his unconventional idea of courtship. Indeed. To John Hammond, our mutual friend. Time for a chin wag. Things to be done. Finally took care of Lucy Thorne. Miss Rabbit. Right. Bloody time, dear sister. How's your afternoon then, Evie?
If only I knew which shipment it was. Then I could trace the weapons to their owner. Capital idea, Freddy. Here we are, the shipping docks. Now, where are the Cockham crates intended for Mr. Plutus? Hello. And now to wait for the crates to be retrieved. Don't want them tea leaves turn to dust, do we? We take these crates. Any mistake will cost you dearly. Keep your knickers on. We hear you. Good. Because I ain't repeating myself. It's a shame I can't stop in for a pint. <laughs> They're nervous. I should keep my distance. I bet Greenie's tailing Evie right about now. Good luck.
Templars. Lead me to Mr. Plutus. Keep moving. Walk on, girl. That's a girl. Whoa there. Slow down now. Let's go. Doing fine, girl. Steady on. That's the way. Who's a good horse? You are. Steady on. Whoa! That's a girl. Easy now. Doing fine, girl. Keep moving. Walk on, girl. Whoa, now! The weapons are here. Same routine as before. <laughs> the twopenny opens a vault, we robs it, and leaves the money in his storehouse. Look sharp, the boys are waiting. To the Bank of England. Yeah. Plutus is twopenny. Hmm. 
Well, what say you? You're not gonna like it. Now, see here. I am graced with the Aberline family's robust constitution. Two pennies rob in the Bank of England. <laughs> the governor of the bank. I think I might need to sit down. There's no time for that. Bastard's probably deep in the vault by now. However you get in, I don't want to know. Of course. But do you know how I can get in? The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupiny well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupiny is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium in disguise. Tupini won't be leaving that vault. rest of your life to count it, as long as you live. We should be nearly finished by now. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squander their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as their work. It is their city, not yours. 
Without our investments, there would be no city. For the path of the dead. Police, we're saved! Arrest them all for robbing the people of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice. The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffooned Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I'd wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other, when we can have it all? What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern, again. Understood? You may see yourself out. Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. 
So Sterik's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. to do in this fast city. Some of them. Back from a caper, Gov.
money is counterfeit. I'm an honest woman. What has happened? Your brother. What's he done this time? <laughs> the newspapers are all over Tupany's murder. And if that weren't enough, someone has stolen the currency printing plates. Was that also Jacob's doing? I doubt it. Now, no one trusts the bank or England's currency. There, there will be inflation, riots, manufacturing will jump to America for the cheap labor. In short, Britain is done for. Jacob, you've really put your foot in it now. What if I smuggle the plates back into the bank? Well, it'd certainly help. Better yet, it would call into question the stories on Tupany's murder, which would restore confidence in the economy. That's settled then. Britain lives to see another day. Oh, and if it's not too much trouble, would you mind destroying any counterfeit notes you come across so they don't circulate? Of course. It really is very good of you to help. No more exportation! Follow me. The counterfeit money is being spent nearby. Well, if you can call it counterfeit, with those printing plates, it's nearly impossible to tell the real notes from the fake ones. Mr. Abelay. If this gets out... Well, I've said this already. When people don't trust their currency, and we're already seeing riots... Mr. Abelay. Follow me. I don't wish to be robbed on my way to the cart. The counterfeiters. Heard about the rioting at the bank? They can riot all they like. We won't be giving back those plates. What attention difference does it make? It's not like he has any real cash. Since they're just since we've got the printed plates, it's all real cash. Did you hear those crowds? Sounds like all of London is rioting. Nothing to do with us. I can't believe Jacob's managed to shatter the entire economy. Father was right. He acts in haste and repents not at all. as you would the Bank of England itself. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. <laughs> Not at all. We just walked right in on the chaos. Nobody stopped you. They didn't even give us a second look.
Now to sneak these back into the bank. There, as if they were never taken. London papers are running the story of how it was all a hoax. No more riots. Faith in the bank restored. Finally, I might get a quiet night on patrol. Miss Fry, I can't thank you enough. Glad we've averted catastrophe, Sergeant. Although it's Jacob who should be thanking me.
Maybe. Do be careful with that sharp blade. Please tell me again where we are going. I found a letter from the Prince Consort among Lucy Thorne's research, marked with the same insignia as your key, dated 1847. 1847? The same year the Prince began renovations to Buckingham Palace. You think he added a vault for the Shroud? And since there is no map of the palace with the room marked Secret Vault. Your Highness, may I present Miss Evie Fry, Miss Fry, Maharaja Dulip Singh. A pleasure, Your Highness. My friend, the plans you asked for have been removed. Removed? By whom? Crawford Starrick, or someone employed by him. Yes, I thought you might recognize the name. I know where they are, but it is heavily guarded. That part will not be a problem. I thought not. We're going to need a plan. I can provide a distraction for the guards while you find a safe way inside. Oh, really? <laughs> for you, Evie, certainly. Well, once I'm inside, I'll find someone who knows where the papers are stored. And we will meet back on the train. Be careful. What's the plan? When you give the signal, I'll draw the guards into a fight and then use a smoke bomb to get away. And I'll take advantage of the confusion. Ready? Absolutely. <clears throat>
your mitt. Everyone's on oh, I've had quite enough of you. I'll shut your mouth right quick. He's over there. That's not them. Nothing here. No. Looks like I have to ask someone where the plans are. I don't know where they've taken him. Taken who? The man. Dressed like you. The guards dragged him off. Henry, the plans you stole, where are they? I don't know anything about that. The plans. The mission. You're some of Clara's children. They took Mr. Henry. We couldn't stop them. I bit one of them good, though. They dragged him off in a red carriage. They won't get far, though. One wheel looked like it was about ready to fall off. You can see the cart tracks. It looks so wobbly-like. Out 
good girl. Slowly now. Come on. Easy now. Go on. There you go. Now. There you are. Go on. That cart's been run off the road. They must be driving quickly. They're knocking people over too. And destruction of public property. I must be on the right track. There you go. Found you. Now to find Henry.
Henry. Evie, um, they sent someone to move the architectural plans. Do you have them? Did they hurt you? I'm fine. Let's go. What about the plans? The plans are lost. Just concentrate on escaping, please. Sight and go to look at them. I must find the vault before Starek secures the shroud. We'll talk to the Maharaja again. I will talk to the Maharaja. You will get your head looked at. I'm sorry my capture hasn't done your plans. You'd be safer on the train. Even if you find the vault, you can't just walk into Buckingham Palace alone. I won't be alone. I'll see you back at the train, Mr. Green. I'm sorry, there's nothing to your life. 
How about you, sir? Flower so pure, it'll make you weep. Rare finds here! Come, Come sir! Have have a Best in London! No, like take a All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely call ourselves free, sir. This is so like you, Gladstone. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. Oh, yes. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Perhaps while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal the sort of things that have returned the crowd to the bloody stops. How? Dare you, sir. 
Merely because I do not wish to see government placed in the hands of judges, you would make these slanderous accusations? I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. I presume. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. B. B. My name's Herbert. Then why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to... Smug bastard. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is, you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Uh, uh, Perfect. Oh. Jacob, good to see you. I walked up Parliament.
So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies, but we've learned of a threat on your life, and the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. Well, if you excuse me a moment. So fast, Your Excellency. about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day! Thank <laughs> you. 
James Smith. You won't find better. Have a good day now. Everything you need to survive the streets, right here. You have another laugh. Get out of here. Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. Ha, 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 I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. Someone get killed. I saw a murder. That's yours. If you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right, you are, sir. God's sake. Blind. Someone gets top of my very eyes and I've got to turn the head. Someone stop that murderer. Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. Young man, Dizzy ought to keep you on to deal with the liberals. That's a girl. There, in the cart, is the Prime Minister's wife. I really must not be seen here, Mr. Fry. <laughs> Steady on. Yeah. Doing fine. Let us avoid these vultures. Yeah. Who's a good horse? You are. Steady on. That's a girl. Oh, what a rough place. Give me your arm, Mr. Fry. Let us see what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Cheap 
No one steals while I'm around. Oh, please, sir. Oh, Teddy. Stop that at once. Thief! Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. Do you know this gentleman is a... Oh, what was it? Uh, yes. A costermonger. Of all things. Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go? Everything all right? Oh, yes. I've just learned to whistle. Right. <laughs> oh, Mr. Fry, look at those two. Uh, yes, they, uh, they seem to be, um... Married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company. But another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are. The old one... So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. Mm. Change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? 
I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> Well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. Tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. He is a good Tiresome person. man. You are. Always blathering on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens. Campaigning against the corrupt practices Steady bill. On. Perhaps you could catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. The Green government could ill afford another scam. I assure you, I'll be very discreet. Keep moving. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes.
This next bit's mine. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law.
like the boys tried to hide. It Who would be are wise you? to keep quiet. Who oh, was scared to die? Oh, my success! There really means nothing in the end. National etiquette oh, and mysterious. Important thing for becoming famous by natural love. Clava. Come in. Ah, Minister Hacker. One moment. Now then, <clears throat> let's discuss this like... Good God! Who the bloody hell... Oh, shut up. Balaclava should fall not on the glory fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick.
Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud.
Steady on. That's the way. I believe that shall help you greatly. Doing fine, girl. Yes! Hmm. Better check the back. I'm here to see Mr. Roth. Weapons? No, thank you. I've got my own. You should be on the stage, sir. This way. is arrived. Come, sit. I've had my eye on you for some time. I find your heroics in battle in the great Crawford Sterrick quite magnificent. I've been picking off your soldiers one by one. Doesn't that make you angry? On the contrary. Surprise is a spice of life. Now, Mr. Sterrick, that's a different story. I'm drowning in directives, all terribly pouring. Let's say we work together and bring him down. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. My friend, if I fail to provide you with the chance to cause Staric some pain, well, you can charge into this theater and kill me yourself. What do you get out of all this? The chance to have a little fun with the bravest man in London. <laughs> you have a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, my carriage. Shall we? This way. Well, you don't expect me to go alone, do you? 
take the reins. Driver, to St Pancras, and don't spare the horses. I thought you and Staric would be fighting for the same ends. What happened? <laughs> ah, you know, he required my services to train his gang leaders, but the man is dreadful. You don't say. Freedom, Jacob. Stealing that is far more than a sin. It denies us our humanity. Right you are. And St. Pancras will ease our suffering? The station contains a large shipment of explosives to be dispatched to Starrick and Co. And you intend to steal it? What? No. I intend to blow it up. Yes. This will do nice. There's a train parked inside St. Pancras. Then I'm to do away with Starrick's merchandise, leaving chaos in my wake? Why not, Jacob? Why not? As we speak, the up train is headed towards us. That may help you enter the station unseen. As long as it remains on the tracks. I'd say good luck, but you don't need it. I shall make certain any reinforcements from Steric are kept away from the station.
We'd have been better off if we had these explosives months ago.
Maybe that business here will soon be. Intruder! Make it quick and painful. <laughs> <laughs> Watch for the roof boy! <laughs> that crazy cow <laughs> boy is here!
Someday you blighters will understand that I'm doing this for your own good. Two down. Be ashamed to stop now. shipment left. Now to find somebody to drive this hunk of metal. I'll cut your tongue! Oi! Get your bleeding hands off me! What do you think you're up to? Hush now, please. Do be quiet, sir. No need to make a fuss. What do you want from me? I just need you to keep the engine stoked. All right, I'll help you. Don't hurt me. Think of me as another passenger. I just happen to have a rather large blade pointed at your back. Would you be so kind as to get up some steam? will be on his knees in no time. My hat is off to you. Apologies, I must run. Do come see me again.
everything you- You do me a good turn. Thank you. Watch yourself, I'll be on you in a flash! Steady on. Whoa then. the perfect second out in forests. Have you? There's borrowing to be done. Three of Starrick's henchmen are about to disappear. Oh, you sly devil. Oh, and I'm coming along this time. There is no sense in giving you all the glory. Off to my carriage we go, Lewis! These cowardly fools under Steric have built their own prisons. It's a dreadful waste. They could be building gangs instead. No, no. Why build when you can ebb and flow like the sea? I would not deign to pin them down. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? What about your bird? I dare say I shall never tire of the National Gallery. Why does Starrick interest himself with art? He's hired a fiendishly talented woman, one Hattie Cadwallader, to procure works for him. She has excellent taste. We're kidnapping her for the sin of being Starrick's collector? Oh, my dear, no. We are kidnapping her not because she loves art, but because she finances Starrick's enterprises by selling it. One must never mix art and money. Wait for me with the carriage. I'll pay her a visit. Splendid. Bring your carriage around and wait for the cargo. I shan't be very long. Someone around here must know Miss Hattie Cadwallader. I'm looking for Miss Hattie Cadwallader. I ain't seen her. I knows what she's been up to, though. And what's that? Friggin' art, sir. She finished a statue not far from here. The statue must be around here somewhere. Hey, Smalley. Know anything about what happened here? I saw her who pinched it, sir. Miss Cadwallader? She holds down the sewers, sir. Is everything all right? Of course it's sewers. Why the bloody sewers?
Mr. Starrick, his next delivery is on its way. And tell him, too, that I've grown tired of these working conditions. Wasn't Starrick who sent me? Then who? Maxwell Roth sent his regards. What a pleasant surprise. You... Ah! You'll be hearing from Mr. Starrick, Roth. Everything you need to survive the streets, right here. So very much. Huh? <laughs> Why the Alhambra? Every good criminal needs a place to invest his ill-gotten gains. And what's better than distracting the world with a little light entertainment while you do so? Oh, come now. You can't tell me you don't enjoy the triumph of a well-received play. The plaudits and praise, the reviews. I enjoy being entertained, Jacob. If one of the productions pleases me... Ah, the part. The dwelling place of Starrick's head of security, one Benjamin Raffles. Those who cross him tend to disappear without warning. Sounds like we'll be fast friends. Be careful. His guards are never far away. You. The villain! You have your villains mixed up, Mr. Raffles. The man you work for is the real villain here. My most fragrant raffles. How very good to see you again. Got well, Roth. It's into the back with you, then. Who is this Lyris that works for you? Ha! A bit of an odd fish, isn't he? Came to me a few years past. He's very solemn. 
but always soap a lot. And he has many other talents. Who am I looking for? Chester Swineborn. A copper by day and snitch by night. Remove him from the pack, and you cut Starek's ties to the police force. Must be good at what he does to keep the charade going for so long. He is indeed, dear boy. Fine girl. <laughs> All these bobbies give me goose flesh. Welcome to Scotland, Yard. Now, now, Swineborn. Let's not make a scene. You're not going to get away with this. Oh, but I am. Where are you taking me? A friend would like to say a quick how do you do. Oh, Someone's up to no good. Oh. What's happening here?
Hoth? It's been a while. You've really let yourself go. Shame. Now, oh. it's into the back with you. Excellent work. Do come find me at the Alhambra. I have more amusements planned for us. Steady on. That's a girl. Slow down. That's it. I'm coming over there. <laughs> This way, my dear. I've something to show you. Hop in. Where are we going? One of Starik's workshops, where they build weapons for his army. When the world is full of nasty things, we must tear those things apart. A man like Starrick built a world around his own desires. And so... In you. you must see the potential, dear Jacob. This workshop is one of Starrick's. Set the dynamite and let's blow it to atoms. 
together. I wonder what that's about. Come over there. <sighs> Looks like a mess. I should stay clear on. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect we might move. Not much. Does he know? People can see. We can see him.
He must be up to something. Looks like he's got to screw loose.
That's one. There. What's that over there? Set. Wait, I think I heard something. That looks interesting. And done. All rigged up. Perfect. Let's put our plan into action. Stand back. Ready? Wait! Whatever for? There are children in there. Jacob, my dear. Starrick uses child labor to manufacture goods. We must put an end to his production line. But not like this. Why not? I can do whatever I damn well please. Soon, you will understand what it is to be free, as I am. Light them up, boys! No! What the hell are you doing? We're not playing games anymore, Roth! No. We're not. No time to idle! Gift, sir, from Mr. Roth. You should be warned, Mr. Fry, that when Roth is angry with one, he generally brings suffering to many. My dearest Jacob, alas, it seems our adventures together have come to a close. Although our time together was brief, it's left a lasting mark. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. Cordially, Maxwell. Post scriptum. I'm putting on a show this evening. All of London will be there. Enclosed, please find your invitation.
Western Yorkshire. On, girl. Let's go. Sorry, sorry. Look at me, please. Head up, Gwen, head up. <sighs> Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alhambra Music Hall. Tonight, we have, for one night only, a very special performance of Corvus the Trickster. While some of the effects may be visceral and highly disturbing, do not be alarmed, my good people. Fear not. This is a purest form of entertainment. Tonight's performance immortalizes and is for the benefit of a young fellow very near and dear to my heart. I'll be serving you this evening, gentlemen. You're still here, love. Last time, I swear, you nearly poisoned us. Scene two, stand by. Oh. 
Let me out! I need to lower the grid for the show! A big round of applause for this brave, brave man! Our volunteer is about to die for you, Excuse me, love. Just looking for the lavatory. Who's over there? Thanks. You lucky people are about to witness this gentleman being fired upon at point-blank range. Our performer will hit several targets placed around his head. Exciting, is it not? <laughs> Will our honored guest go unharmed? We British are a hardy bunch. Let's put that hardiness to the test. in your mouth, doesn't it? Like eating pork when expecting venison. The flavor intensifies the second time. The hunt now a search for want rather than need. Visualized mouth watering. <laughs> we found a suitably flat headed gentleman for this one. <laughs> you, you laugh, ladies and gentlemen, but I assure you that is the case. I have no doubt that you could hazard a guess as to what this one concerns, my friends. Please, please spare me, I give up. I'm not gonna fight you. Our courageous participant hasn't even flinched. <laughs> Standing a few feet away, our performer expertly throws his knives at the apple, slicing it in two. Oh, show yourself! <laughs> oh, 
I hope you have enjoyed your evening so far, ladies and gentlemen. I know I have. Now, before our final act, I would like to toast all you brave people who joined us tonight to celebrate life and death. Go on, toast them! <laughs> your move, Jacob, my dear! Burn! 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 Why did you do it? All of it. What? Snap a baby crow's neck between my thumb and forefinger. Slice to bits the ones you deem innocent. Keep the world in its divine, manic state. For the same reason, I do anything. Why not? I'll never make it out alive. Disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupinay has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It's up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. prevent a return of the Dark Ages. I will start anew. London must be reborn. The Peace of Eden is under Buckingham Palace. We've got all we need. Let's start planning our infiltration. Hold on. Better to get visual verification. If we're gonna move, we need to be 100% sure. We'll only get one shot before Otso Burr crashes down on us. Gotta agree with Sean. 
We'll position ourselves near the palace, but we'll wait for you to sync the genetic data before we move. It's all up to you, Initiate. You're late. Staric is making his move. The piece of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you call father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry, this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods! Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the piece of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more for all time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. What? Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you would be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother, dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. of Evie, treating me like a child. Where can they be? The ball is tonight. 
They must have taken the invitations with them. You wouldn't happen to have seen two carriages pass by here just now? I did, sir. One with a man in it, the other with a woman. They split up. Where did the man go? That way. Thank you. They went in this direction. private party event. Don't mind if I do. Service. Do not let Mr. Gladstone out of your sight. Supporting me and the party. When will Mr. Disraeli give up the fight? He's certainly outmatched. We need more moralizing in modern politics. Indeed, we do. Madam, what a lovely address. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for any antics. Maybe I haven't been quite as delicate as I could have been, but still.
Mrs. Gladstone's under guard. Better be cautious. Better wait until she's alone. One should not attend the Queen's ball without making a proper entrance. The devil is going on over there. Now for the invitations. What's this? Swords must be left at the door by order of the Queen. Freddy will know what to do. Steady on. Walk on, girl. Easy now. That's a girl. Who's a good horse? You are. Doing fine, girl. Walk on, girl. Steady on.
sure to come again. I've got this. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. What a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes, and your face, voice and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you? Only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course.
There's something going on. Oh dear. I hope it's safe. What's going on? Charming. Now to hide the body. Freddy, here I come. Let's go. One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Yeah. 